There's a movie out which you may have seen, uh, and if you haven't seen it, it, it will be in Amazon and other outlets soon enough, so you need to check it out. It's called The Front Runner. It's the story of Gary Hart's ill-fated 1988 presidential campaign. Actually, the campaign crashed and burned in 1987, didn't even make it to 1988. Gary Hart was a Colorado senator, a Democrat, with the right style, the right hair, the right positions that seemed to uh, appeal to progressive Democrats at the time. But Hart did have a problem. Like many politicians before and since, he was a habitual womanizer. And he was undone by a story that ran in the Miami Herald and a photograph that ran on the front of the National Enquirer. The story was about an affair between Hart and a young woman named Donna Rice. The photograph showed Rice sitting on the candidate's lap on a party yacht called Monkey Business. Hart was even wearing a, a, a Monkey Business t-shirt along with a smug and, and happy smile. He was clearly enjoying himself that day. When the story in the photograph ran, Gary Hart's political campaign was toast. Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis went on to win the Democratic nomination in 1988. By no coincidence at all, there was a story by James Fallows in the November issue of The Atlantic, in which Fallows says that Lee Atwater was responsible for setting up the meetings and the series of coincidences which led to Gary Hart being on a boat named Monkey Business with Donna Rice and a photographer. Is that paranoid? Perhaps. But South Carolina boy Lee Atwater was the acknowledged evil genius of American politics in the 1970s and the 1980s, and he made a lot of things happen. Atwater was born in Georgia, but moved to South Carolina at a very early age where he attended the public schools and later attended Newberry College, where he got involved in Republican politics. He worked in a number of GOP campaigns in South Carolina in the 1970s, and in 1980 he was a lieutenant in the Ronald Reagan presidential campaign. After the campaign, after that campaign, uh, Atwater took a job in the Reagan White House and then worked again in the 1984 Reagan re-election campaign. Then in 1985 he got into lobbying, going to the lobbying firm of Black, Manafort, and Stone. His big break came in 1988, when Lee Atwater was named to head the presidential campaign of George H.W. Bush. It was in this role that he engineered the infamous Willie Horton ad, uh, if you haven't seen it or if you've seen it and forgotten it. This is the Willie Horton ad. Bush and Dukakis on crime. Bush supports the death penalty for first-degree murderers. Dukakis not only opposes the death penalty, he allowed first-degree murderers to have weekend passes from prison. One was Willie Horton, who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Weekend prison passes. Dukakis on crime. The Willie Horton ad was pure bullshit. Dozens of states had furlough programs, such as the one in Massachusetts. Even Ronald Reagan signed such a program into law in California. But the ad hit just the right nerve of white suburban anxiety. It propelled Bush up more than 17 points in the polls and helped him carry 40 states in the November election. It also led to 20 years of get tough on crime legislation aimed largely at African Americans and it did more than any other single word or deed to turn the once grand old party of Abraham Lincoln into the modern party of Donald Trump. With the election of 1988, Lee Atwater became the first celebrity campaign consultant. Before Atwater, campaign con consulting was considered to be was seen as a rather shabby behind-the-scenes business, but Atwater made it sexy and exciting. He was on the covers of magazines and made the TV talk show circuit. 
but the party was short-lived for Atwater. He was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor in March 1990, and 12 months later, he was dead. He was 40 years old. He spent the last weeks and months of his life calling and writing letters to apologize to some of the people he had hurt with his lies and dirty tricks over the years. Gary Hart was not one of them. It was also during this time that Atwater confided to an associate that he had set up the encounter on the monkey business that fateful day that led to the fall of Gary Hart. And it was this conversation that led to the story in the Atlantic. The Atwater funeral in March 1991 was the funeral of the year in Columbia, South Carolina. I remember it well. I wasn't at the funeral, of course, but I was living in Columbia and it was quite a show. It took place at Trinity Cathedral across the street from the State House. Um, Strom Thurmond was there, of course, along with Carol Campbell, the former governor. Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney was there, even Vice President Dan Quayle, I still get a kick out of saying that, Vice President Dan Quayle, and scores of other Republican politicos and operators from around the country. That was followed a few days later by another funeral at the National Cathedral in Washington. It's scary to think what other garbage Lee Atwater might have dumped into our political system if he had lived to a ripe old age. But I feel confident in saying that he would have probably found himself right at home in the Republican Party of Donald Trump. One more note uh, on the saga of Lee Atwater, and I couldn't make this stuff up. Both Willie Horton and Donna Rice, like Lee Atwater himself, were natives of South Carolina. What do you say? Small state, small world.